Hi and welcome everyone. This is the Hobo Prepper and I am Friar Tuck and I'm coming to you from Newberry, Florida. This is about halfway to where my final destination is for tonight. So some of you guys might be asking, well, why, why are you uh, just now getting on the road? If you go and look at a map, I'm like 20 miles outside of Gainesville. So you might be asking yourself, why, why did I not, uh, why did I not leave right away like, like I was supposed to? And uh, that's one of two topics that I'm going to be talking about today. So the first topic I want to talk about is camp security. And, and this is a big problem why I was delayed for a couple of days. Now, when, when you're camping, especially if you're camping with people, the people that you bring back uh, to your camp, in so many ways, they have an implied invitation to come back. So, for example, I go I, um, and I set up a camp and it's just me and I'm the only one that knows where my camp is. I mean, other people may be able to stumble across it, but um, I'm the only one that knows where my camp is as far as people know, goes, right? And then all of a sudden I make a friend and I say, okay, well, why don't you come back to my place and we'll we'll hang out, we'll, we'll do a couple of things, right? And now all of a sudden that friend has an implied invitation. He's gonna come back with uh, by himself. He's gonna come back with other friends. And then those friends are gonna bring other friends because all of a sudden, you know, sometimes when you when you create connections with people, they just end up, they end up inviting everybody and everybody ends up inviting everybody else. And that will compromise your, your camp security. Uh, another thing is, is uh, you know, you need to really work on vetting those that you are are bringing back to your camp. Um, why would you want to vet those that you're bringing back to your camp? So I had an experience recently. So you guys know that I smoke my weed, uh, and there was a kid. I wanted him to uh, to try some with me, and and because I wanted to make sure that it was uh, that it was what it was supposed to be. And uh, you know, I, I made friends with him. We smoked together a couple of times. Finally, one day, uh, he comes up to me and demands that I smoke with him, and I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, uh, one, I don't have any. Two, I just don't feel like it. And so we we went back and forth. And th this guy, if he had originally tried to get me to take him back to my camp, and if I would have taken him back to my camp, then when he got all confrontational and tried to like literally bully me into smoking a bowl with him uh it i i don't i i'm glad i didn't bring him back to camp because then that would have been another compromise in camp security the the main rule of camp security is be careful on who you bring back and be careful on what you bring back Okay, because you, you got to be you got to be really careful about this. Okay, um, you know, for example, you know, you bring you bring a girl back to your place, and you know, uh, and so on and so forth, and now, you know, she decides to come back and she brings all the other girls with her, and so on and so forth, and now all of a sudden, you you've now got a bunch of cackling hens that have decided to come in and squat in your camp. Uh, it, it sometimes it's it's not fun. You know, and another thing is, is okay, so now let's say, uh, you know, I got my camp, but I found somebody that I like and I wouldn't mind, you know, sharing uh, camp security with because usually at a camp, if you've got more than one person, you kind of try and make it to where uh, there's always somebody there at camp when you are, when, when you're, you're gone. So if I leave, somebody else is going to be there. If they leave, I got to stay behind. But, and it's kind of something that's there. Plus, you know, since nobody's really bringing anybody back, that's just kind of an extra layer of security that you can, uh, that, that you can, you can work out. So then, you know, all of a sudden the, the person that I bring, now they start bringing people back and those people start bringing people so on and so forth which again compromises camp security so if you are going to bring somebody into your camp you need to make sure that you have especially if camp security is important to you uh, that's something that uh that that you need to make sure that you're up front with and tell the person it's like do not i mean you want to bring a girl back bring a girl back but uh, make sure that you vet the people that you bring back because I don't want just random people back here. If you're not here, I don't want people just randomly coming up looking for you because in some ways uh, it could be seen as just them scouting to either check your schedule to see like when you're at camp or just see if you're at camp. And if you're not and the guy that they're looking for isn't there, well, then all of your stuff may end up uh, get gone through and some of it may come up missing. So when it comes to camp security, uh, you know, you got to be really, really 
uh, careful and curious about the people that you bring. And you really got to make sure that you set boundaries because if you're not going to set boundaries, what ends up happening, and this has happened to Puckett and this happens to a lot of people uh, within the homeless community. I, I think it's like, I, I don't get it. It's like you, you would figure that you would learn the lesson um, the first time, but sometimes it takes seven or eight more times to learn the lesson. And that is, is just be careful who you bring back. Be careful who you let know where your camp is. And, you know, even even your friends. So, like, you know, we had a, an instance where um, where a tent was being sold and the, the person that was buying the tent uh, was bringing other people there and giving them permission to sleep in our camp, which, again, is another issue with camp security. So if you're somebody like me that's carrying around about $3,000 worth of gear, which is like $2,500 more than than the the person who has the most expensive gear around you know that is uh that that will keep you up at night and you won't sleep very well it, it really plays uh into into your your overall uh just peace of mind because knowing that there's not anybody coming back there and anybody that does come back there isn't supposed to be back there and they're to be met with confrontation um you know, it makes it a lot easier to go to sleep at night than wondering what random people are going to show up that, you know, kind of have semi permission to be there, but don't really have permission to be there uh, and just keep showing up in the middle of the night, like 2.30 in the morning, you know, yelling for his buddy that, that isn't there, you know, uh, in the middle of the night. And so things like this is really something that you need to be, uh, you need to be aware of. So, um, you know, and, and that is that. And so one other topic that I want to talk about before I close this out is that, um, you know, leaving leaving Grace Marketplace and, and making the connections that I made and making the friends that I made. I got to tell you, it kind of makes it hard. It's one of those things where you look at it and you just go, man, I really wish I didn't have to leave. And it's not that I had to leave. It's that one, I made a commitment to you guys that I would leave. And two, I and two. Um, you know, I, I just, Gainesville didn't offer me very much, you know, I mean the people there, the people that I made connections and friends with and the people that there, there's a couple of people that I met that I would, you know, be willing to stand with them in, in any type of fire, you know, pocket being one of them, you know, because there are some really good people there and y you can, you can dog on the homeless all you want. You, you can, you could talk about how homeless are, you know, lower than dirt. But at the end of the day, they're still humans. They're, they still have, you know, needs, wants, desires, fears, phobias, just like you, just like me. They just happen to be in a different space in their life. And, you know, when you when you stop being prejudiced against people and the things in which they do, you know, especially, you know, because I mean, everybody except for me was doing the white dope. And, uh, you know, to be able to still have some sort of cordial friendship with people like that and see them for who they were versus see them for the, the drugs that they were taking and discriminate against them for that. Um, it made for much, much better uh, interactions and, and relations with people. And, you know, I will tell you just from my experience with Puckett, because even though I didn't do what he does, um, the fact that I was willing to accept him and to kind of like... No, I guess be his Jiminy Cricket, um, be be that little voice on his shoulder to kind of, you know, help him, you know, see what he needs to see. Uh, you know, I would have never had that opportunity had I been prejudiced against him for the things in which he did. Because normally, if you do anything other than what I do, I don't hang out with you, and that's kind of the way it is in in that community in the first place, unless you're doing business. Okay. <clears throat> So guys, if you want to leave a tip in my tip jar, I could really use it. Um, you know, I am, uh, I've got some, some cliff bars and some food, but it's not going to last me, but a couple of days. Um, I still have not broken down and gotten food stamps. Uh, if you guys think I should get food stamps, let me know down in the comments. But if you guys don't think I should get food stamps and you think I should just be able to, uh, go on my own merit, uh, you know, uh, five dollars to get me breakfast in the morning. I've got, I've got everything I need for like lunch and for dinner. I just don't have anything for breakfast to get me started. You know, like a cup of coffee and a, a and a sausage biscuit or something like that. But if you want to leave something down in the tip jar, it'd be much appreciated. Uh, also, if you want to come over to Patreon, uh, it is five dollars a month for the uh, 
Yeah, it's $5 a month for the daily videos and $10 if you want the live streams. I do a live stream every Sunday uh, at three o'clock. And if you are a Patreon subscriber to the live stream, uh, to the live stream subscription, then about uh, four or five hours later when I take it off of YouTube public, it will go into private to where you can only see it there on Patreon. Also the gear that I have, I mean, you guys hear me, I've been using it for a couple of months and uh, I I rave about it. So if you are looking for gear uh, to improve your stance, if you're on a budget, this stuff will help. Uh, you can um, you can find it down in the description. It's in the affiliate links. Also, uh, you know, lastly, you you could like, subscribe, share. I need a thousand subscribers, four thousand watch hours. Uh, you know, so on and so forth, just so that I can monetize this channel. Sorry, guys, I am a little tired just because of it being a. Uh, I've already done over 20 miles today. So anyways, guys, I will see you in the next video. And uh, you may see some delays because a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be doing over the next few days is going to be going up on Patreon uh, only. And But I still want to check in with you guys every few days uh, on YouTube. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.